This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TVMALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Hello, and welcome to a special kids episode of Scare You to Sleep. I'm Shelby, and I'll be telling you a few spooky tales to get you into the Halloween spirit. Before we begin, I want to say thank you to Logan and Chloe for giving me the idea of having a kids episode. Also, for parents, the first two stories are pretty mild, and our last two stories are a little scarier. For smaller kids, I would give the last two a listen before you dive in together. Alright, first up, I would like to read you the story that started it all. It's called The Trailer of Midnight Vampires by Logan Mims, age five and three quarters. Get ready, Logan has written quite a wild ride. One day at midnight. Logan snuck out of the window of his room in his house. He went to the forest. He found a trailer. There were newspapers and just plain old newspapers. They were all about criminals. Logan went to a tree next to the trailer. He did not see anything. But when he went back inside, he saw a vampire on the front seat. The vampire took out a duplicator machine, and the vampire made 100 of himself. Then the vampires chased Logan. Logan ran and ran. Then Logan went into a dark cave. And do you know what came out above him? 50 red and black bats. Then Logan got out of the cave. The vampires kept chasing him. And then, Logan took a machine out of his pocket. That machine wasn't a machine you carry. It was a necklace machine. The necklace machine shot out magical powers at the vampires. Then the vampires were asleep. Because it was a sleeping power. Then Logan shot out a spell called Lumos that lit up the machine. Then Logan went up close to the vampires and stuck the machine necklace in their faces. Then it burned their eyes. Then Evan and Dylan came to help Logan get away quicker because the shining spell only lasted for a little bit. And then they ran and ran But the shining spell ended, and the vampires got up before they could run away. The boys went to their next-door neighbor's house. And then, the boys asked if they knew anywhere they could go to be safe from the vampires. The neighbor said, There is a haunted house that has a lock that only might work with Logan's necklace. Then, the boys left the neighbor's house. They went to the haunted house that the neighbor talked about with the boys. Logan unlocked the door with his magic necklace. Then the boys went into the backyard. And it turned out that the backyard was a graveyard. And what happened next, once they got out of the house to the backyard, was a little finger sticking out of the ground next to a gravestone. Then the whole entire hand came out. Then the whole entire arm came out. And then the whole entire body came out. And it was a skeleton. Then it happened to another gravestone. This time, it was a zombie. And then it happened with another gravestone, and this time, it was a zombie with skeletons, arms, and legs. The boys found a magical shell, 
that the boys connected to Logan's magical necklace. Now they can use twice as much power as they could with only the necklace. Then the boys found the vampires in the next-door neighbor's house from the haunted house. And the boys finally defeated the vampires by using more power than they had before by Logan's necklace and the magical shell. The magical shell was meant to be used on vampires. It's kind of like creating a vampire that can suck out the vampire's blood. And then the magic vampire defeated all the other vampires. Then the magic vampire disappeared. The end. Next up, we have a tale about the everlasting love of man's best friend. It's called The White Dog. Once there was a boy who had a friendly white dog named Ghost. Joey and Ghost were best friends. They loved to roam the countryside looking for adventure. They climbed rocks and waded through cool streams. Joey's neighbors all liked Ghost too. One day, Farmer Green saw the two friends walk by his farm. There goes that boy and his white dog again, he said. They're lucky to have each other. That day, Joey and Ghost were hunting squirrels. They never caught any, but the chase was the fun part. Ghost would sniff them out. Then the two friends would run after the squirrel until it hid in a tree. Suddenly, Ghost spotted a squirrel. Then Joey saw the squirrel. Ghost ran around the rock. When Joey got to the other side of the rock, he stopped. Ghost barked at Joey. What's wrong, boy? He asked. Ghost kept barking until Joey backed up behind the rock. Then Ghost moved. Now Joey could see why his friend was barking. A large black snake was coiled up next to the rock. Ghost had protected Joey. What a good boy, Joey said. Let's go home. That night, Joey said goodnight to Ghost. He left a treat for him on the doorstep. See you in the morning, he said. The next morning, Joey jumped out of bed and ran downstairs. Outside, he whistled to Ghost. Ghost! Come here, boy, he called. But Ghost didn't come. Joey wondered where his best friend could be. He ran to the barn to find his father. Have you seen Ghost? he asked. Joey's dad climbed down from the tractor. Son, I found Ghost this morning, his father started. He wasn't moving, so I took him to Dr. Parker's house. I'm afraid there was nothing he could do. Ghost was very old. Joey was heartbroken. He would miss his friend so much. He wondered who would explore the woods with him. After Ghost was gone, Joey spent most of his time alone in the woods. He walked along the creeks where he had once played with Ghost. One day... Joey ventured farther than he had ever gone before. He was walking along the edge of a ravine. Suddenly, he lost his footing. The rock gave way and Joey landed on a ledge below. Joey's leg was twisted and scraped. He could not climb out of the ravine. Joey yelled for help, but no one was close enough to hear him. A few miles down the road, Farmer Green was working in his field. It was a very hot day. He wiped the sweat from his brow. Just then, he noticed a white dog running towards him. It looked like Joey's dog. The dog barked and barked at Farmer Green. Hey, ghost. How are you doing? 
he said. Haven't seen you in a while. The dog continued to bark at him. Farmer Green tried to drive his tractor through the row of beans, but the dog ran right in front of the tractor wheels. Farmer Green blew the tractor's horn, but the dog would not budge. Finally, Farmer Green turned off the engine and climbed down from his tractor. Where's your friend, he asked. Now go find him. The dog was very persistent. He continued to bark at Farmer Green. Then he ran up to Farmer Green. He grabbed the man's trousers in his mouth and tried to pull him along. Whoa! Okay, said Farmer Green. I'm coming. Let's go. Farmer Green followed the dog through the woods. They wandered for miles through the thick brush and tall trees. Every few feet, the dog would look back at Farmer Green. He wanted to make sure the man was following him. They came closer to the ravine. The dog disappeared in the brush. Now where did you go? called the farmer. Then he heard the boy's cries. Joey was trying to yell for help. He had almost given up. Then he heard a man yelling back to him. Hello! yelled Farmer Green. Are you hurt? Joey looked up from the ledge. He could see Farmer Green standing on the edge of the ravine. The man was peering down at Joey. He could barely see the boy through the trees. I'm okay, but my leg is hurt, Joey yelled back. I can't make it up there all by myself. Hang on, said the farmer. I'll help you. Farmer Green found a strong vine. He held one end of the vine and he threw the other end to Joey. Use this to pull yourself up, he said. Joey grabbed onto the vine. It was strong and thick like a rope. Using his good leg, Joey pulled himself up the side of the ravine. Near the top, Farmer Green reached over and pulled Joey onto the rocks. Thank you, said Joey. He tried to catch his breath. Farmer Green helped Joey sit up on the rocks. Let's have a look at that leg, he said. Joey's leg was still bleeding. It hurts, Joey said, but I think I can walk. Let's find a branch you can use as a crutch, Farmer Green said. Farmer Green pulled the bark off one end of the branch, then he helped Joey to his feet. You can use this branch as a crutch. Now, let's get you home. Joey stood up shakily. Thank you, Farmer Green, he said. Joey steadied himself with the crutch. Farmer Green held onto his other arm, then they hiked through the brush. When they came to a clearing, Farmer Green spoke. That's some dog you got there, he said. What do you mean? asked Joey. I mean, you'd still be sitting in that ravine if that white dog didn't show me where you were, said Farmer Green. He came into my field and barked and barked. He led me out to the woods to find you. Joey could not believe what Farmer Green was saying. That couldn't have been my dog, sir, whispered Joey. My dog died almost a month ago. Looks like you never do lose your best friend. And Ghost came back one more time to save little Joey. Here's where it starts getting really scary, folks. The third story of the night is called The Clown Statue. A few years ago, there was a wealthy couple who had two young children, a boy and a girl. The family lived in a large house in Newport Beach, California. After taking care of their kids all week, the mother and father decided that they needed a break, so they booked a table for dinner at a nice restaurant. That evening, 
They called a teenage girl they knew and arranged for her to come over and babysit their children while they were out. When the babysitter arrived, the parents told her to fix supper for the kids and put them to bed. After that, you can watch TV and help yourself to anything in the fridge, said the father. And if you wouldn't mind, said the mother, could you watch TV in our bedroom? The kids have been having nightmares recently, so if you hear them crying, you can just go in and calm them down. The babysitter happily agreed, and the parents left for their dinner date. The girl gave the children some milk and cookies, then ushered them upstairs to bed. She started to read them a bedtime story, and before long, the little boy and girl were fast asleep. After tucking them in, she switched off the lights and went to watch TV. When the babysitter walked into the parents' bedroom and sat down, she noticed that there was a creepy-looking clown statue standing in the corner of the room. She tried to ignore it, but it looked so eerie and disturbing that it sent a chill down her spine. She felt as though its eyes were staring straight at her while she watched TV. As time passed, the babysitter started to feel more and more uneasy about the clown statue. Whenever she glanced at it, she got the unsettling feeling that it had moved ever so slightly. Finally, the clown statue began to freak her out so much that she couldn't handle it any longer. She decided to go downstairs and phone the parents. When she dialed the number they had left for her, the mother answered. Hi, it's me, said the babysitter. Everything's fine. The kids are fast asleep in bed, but I was wondering... Would it be okay if I watched TV downstairs? Of course, replied the father. But why? I know it sounds silly, laughed the girl. But the clown statue is really creeping me out. The clown statue? asked the father. Yeah, the clown statue. In your bedroom, the girl replied. The phone went silent for a moment. Listen to me very carefully, said the father. Take the children and get out of the house. We will call the police. Go, now. What's wrong? asked the girl. The father gulped and replied, We don't have a clown statue. For a second, the babysitter just stood there, stunned. Then, she dropped the phone and raced upstairs and grabbed the children. Carrying one under each arm, she raced downstairs again and fled out to the street. Huddled on the sidewalk, comforting the two children, the babysitter looked up at the bedroom window and saw something that made her scream out of horror. Peeking through a gap in the curtains was the white painted face of a clown. It stared at her for a moment, then sank back into the darkness. Within minutes, the police arrived and cautiously entered the house. In the upstairs bedroom, they found a man dressed in a clown suit. When they arrested him, they found a knife concealed in his costume. The clown turned out to be a mentally disturbed man who was a convicted murderer and cold-blooded killer. The evil man had been stalking the family for months, lurking in their attic during the daytime and coming out to sneak around the house at night. For weeks, the children had been complaining about a clown statue that stood in their room and watched them sleep. But the parents had just dismissed this as nightmares.
As many Scary to Sleep fans know, I've been going through a lot of changes in my life. And one thing I've been doing is getting my finances much more organized, and that includes paring down some of the subscriptions I pay for. It feels like everything is a subscription these days, be it for the gym or streaming services or music, the list goes on and on. And something that has helped me tremendously is Rocket Money. They not only helped me cancel subscriptions that were a pain to try to do myself. Have you ever tried to deal with some of these companies directly? It's just a headache. Rocket Money also alerts me when the subscriptions I did keep go up in price, giving me the ability to weigh my options and keep those little extras that add up oh so quickly in check. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash scare you to sleep. That's rocketmoney.com slash scare you to sleep. Rocketmoney.com slash scare you to sleep. Our last story of the night is a spooky tale about a woman in disguise. It's called The Boo Hag. There was a young man named John who lived in a small town in South Carolina. He was a popular fellow and he was known throughout the area for being honest and hardworking. Although he wasn't wealthy, he made a good living doing odd jobs for the local townspeople. John was the most eligible bachelor in town, and every woman was jumping at the chance to be his wife. However, John had his eyes set on a beautifully mysterious young woman who lived alone in a small cabin deep in the woods. She was incredibly beautiful, with long dark hair smooth pale skin and piercing green eyes. Whenever she came to town, she turned the heads of all the men as she walked past. But word around town was that she was a little strange and it was best to stay away from her. However, John couldn't get the mysterious woman out of his mind. One night, there was a dance held in town and all the locals attended. The moment John walked through the door, he noticed the beautiful woman from the woods was there. He worked up the courage to speak to her, and before he knew it, they were dancing the night away. By the next evening, they were wed, and John brought his pretty bride to the nice little cottage he rented just down the road from the family grocery. It had a nice front porch swing with a big bedroom on the second floor and a big attic with a window that could be made up into a second guest room should his new mother-in-law care to visit from her home in the swamp. After fixing him a nice dinner, John's new bride sat a while in the rocking chair near their bed while John yawned and watched her fondly. She cuddled under the blanket and knitted and hummed, and John's eyes grew heavy. He didn't wake up until early morning, when his new bride crept into bed all hot and sweaty and fell asleep at once. When he asked her where she'd been, she wouldn't answer him. John was mighty sore that his bride had snuck out on him on their wedding night. But when she got snappish, and her eyes blazed like they did when he questioned her, he grew frightened and backed down. Life took on an odd pattern for John. During the day, everything was perfect. His wife was sweet and pretty and loving. She kept the house sparkling clean and cooked him wonderful meals. But each night, she refused to come to bed after supper. 
like their wedding night. She sat up singing and rocking and knitting until he was asleep and did not come to bed till just before dawn. She was always sweaty and cranky when she came to bed and went to sleep before John could question her. John was very confused and upset by this behavior and finally confided in his pa one morning after opening up the grocery store. John's pa was awful worried. The visiting priest had gone on to his next parish and there was no one they could consult but the local conjure woman. So he sent John to her with a couple of chickens as a gift. The conjure woman knew all about hoodoo magic and was an excellent herbalist. Local folks went to her when they were sick on account of the doctor lived nigh on 20 miles away. When she heard John's story, she told him to pretend to go to sleep that night and watch what his new bride did. Then he was to come back and tell her everything. John agreed. The next evening, after supper, John yawned and pretended he was very tired. He went to bed and pretended to fall asleep. His wife was rocking back and forth in her chair. But when she thought he was sound asleep, she got up and tiptoed up the stairs. John followed her and saw her going up to the attic. He watched through a crack in the door as she took off her clothes and sat naked at her spinning wheel. She put her foot on the pedal and pumped it up and down. The wheel began to spin and the spindle began to turn. His wife pulled on one of her fingers and the skin came off her hand, just like a glove. She pressed her hand to the spindle and her skin began to wrap around it like yarn. Spin, spin, reel off skin, she cried. As he watched in horror, she spun off all of her skin. It wrapped around the spindle like a bloody blob, leaving his wife a red, fleshless thing with pulsing red muscle and sinew. Her eyes had no lids, and they stared like the eyes of a skinned pig's head in a butcher shop window. She was a terrifying sight, and she sprang through the window and flew out into the night. John ran out to the privy and was sick after he saw her. Who? What was this monster he had married? He was still trembling and in shock when his bride, looking like a normal person again, crept into bed at dawn. And he had trouble behaving normally at breakfast. As soon as he could get away, John ran to the home of the conjure woman and told her about the spinning wheel and the terrible skinless creature who flew away from his attic. A boo hag, the conjure woman said at once. You've married a boo hag. What's a boo hag? asked John. A boo hag is a witch and a shapeshifter, said the conjure woman. She lures men into her trap and then delivers them to her boo daddy, who eats their flesh and gnaws their bones. And that's what she'll do to you if you don't get rid of her first. The conjure woman told John to get himself some blue paint. As soon as the boo hag left the house that night, he was to spread blue paint on every window frame and every door frame and make sure it was two coats thick. A boo hag couldn't fly through a window or door that was painted blue. And if she didn't get back into her skin before dawn, she would be trapped without it and be revealed for the monster she was. So he was to leave one tiny window unpainted and keep it open a sliver so the boo hag could squeeze through. Then he was to fill up her skin with salt and pepper, which would burn her up from the inside out. And John promised to do exactly as the conjure woman said. 
That night, John lingered over his dinner, looking with sad eyes at the pretty woman sitting opposite him. He knew she was really a monster inside, but it was so nice to have a little wife in his home. He hated like anything to see her go, but he didn't want to get eaten by a boo daddy. And that was his fate if she stayed. So he went up to their bedroom and pretended to fall asleep while she rocked and sang and knitted. Then he followed her quietly upstairs and put salt and pepper into her skin after her ugly, red-muscled, blue-veined figure had flown out of their window to her boo daddy. He spent the rest of the night painting over every door and window frame with blue paint, leaving only one small, unpainted window open in the cellar. He nailed it up so that it would be open no further than just a crack, just as the conjure woman instructed him. Then he hid himself behind a large chest of drawers up in the attic to wait for the boo hag. Just before dawn, the boo hag came flying up to the attic window. As soon as she touched the blue frame, she gave a shriek of pain and rage. John listened as she flew around the house, testing each window and door and howling like a banshee when it burned her skinless hands. Then she found the little window in the cellar, and he heard her thump as she landed beside it, followed by a painful whimpering sound as she squeezed and squeezed herself through the narrow opening, her skinless red muscles and blue veins tearing painfully against the rough wood. The boo hag ran up three flights of stairs into the attic and squeezed and squeezed into her skin as fast as she could. She just barely got it on when the first light of dawn shone over the horizon. And that was when the salt and pepper did their work, burning the boo hag's body from the inside out. With a scream of agony, she flung herself out of the attic window. The glass shattered everywhere as she tried to fly away, tearing her skin off. But it was too late. She exploded into tiny pieces right over the swamp, and the alligators had them a mighty feast of cooked boo hag for breakfast that morning. So John was once again without a wife, but bachelorhood looked much better to him after that, and he never went looking for a wife again. Thanks for listening. I had so much fun with this episode. Please let me know how you like it on any of one of my social media platforms. You can join the Scary to Sleep Facebook group, follow me on Twitter or Instagram at scare you to sleep or email me at scare you to sleep at gmail.com. Good night, sweet dreams, and happy Halloween.